as a friend of mine, Bo Lee, who I think will phrase it well, you know, starting a company is like eating glass and starting into the abyss of death. Um, if that sounds appealing, go ahead. It, it's just going to be different for, for different people. In my case, uh, the companies that I've started, I, I, I wanted to have a, a significant effect on the future of the world, you know, or try to at least. And, um, so it wasn't really from the perspective of figuring out what is the easiest way to make money. It's, that would have certainly ruled out rockets and electric cars. Uh, but uh, it was really from the standpoint of what do I think are the important problems that have to be solved um, in order for humanity to have a, a bright future and the um, you know, and so the sustainable energy, both production and consumption, as well as space exploration, and ultimately you know, getting out there and exploring the stars. I think those are two major, major ones. And I think the the biggest problem that humanity faces in the 21st century is sustainable energy, uh, terrestrially. And then, and then the biggest problem of the sort of millennia is the extension of life beyond Earth. So I want to try to do as much as I can in that regard. Um, even if it's not the easiest way to make money. You have to do some, you have to start a company that requires a, a small amount of capital, where it's heavily weighted towards the intellectual capital in your head. Um, so I think anything to do with, with some software and, uh, and you know, the internet uh, is, is, is a really good starting point. Um, you know, it, it would have been impossible for me to, to have done electric cars or rockets, you know, right from the start, because I would have, those require money to get anything done. For, for entrepreneurs that don't have capital, they're, they're really going to have a hard time starting a company in a high capital business. Um, it's possible, but in order to do that, you have to work at a company that does something comparable, so you, you, you have a convincing story uh, to uh, venture capitalists to give you a, a, quite a significant amount of money, rather than, so instead of saying, Say three million dollars, you need say thirty or forty million dollars. It, it's a you know it's a much higher hurdle. So, it, it, so therefore, I think it's better to try doing something which requires low capital as kind of your first company. With, with the success of that, then take capital from from that and plow it into your second company. That's what I did basically. Right. Can you explain to me how do you run a space company and an electric car company at the same time? Both of them seem like very challenging. Enterprises in and of their own right. Uh, does it help you uh, to, to do more than one? Uh, are, are there or are you just juggling everything? Uh, I'd say I do it with great difficulty. Uh, is is quite hard. Uh, <laughs> do you recommend uh, running more than one company? No, I don't recommend it. <laughs> uh, I try to not run uh, two companies, but then I, I don't have a choice. I have to run both companies. Uh, or, or one of them would have failed. Well, there were certainly many hiccups. That's, that's an understatement. More like choking to death uh, uh, and, and barely surviving. Uh, so it was difficult. I mean, never having been, been in the auto business, it was impossible to predict all, all the issues that we would encounter uh, ahead of time. Um, and, uh, you know, so we knew it would be hard, but we didn't know it would be as hard as it was. I actually feel very confident of, of Tesla's future at this point. I don't know if it's a place uh, or confident, but I, I actually think it's, uh, it's in a really good spot. Uh, SpaceX is uh, already slated to be the, the main replacement for the space shuttle. And then in about three years or so, we expect to be carrying uh, astronauts. Uh, and then in... That's the, that's the real test, right? No, no. Uh, uh, Astral is just biological cargo. <laughs> the reason why we haven't seen significant improvements in space transportation is because the, the, the barriers to entry is extremely high. Uh, you know, it's normally the province of governments and big governments at that. Um, so uh, when there are high barriers to entry, then you, you, you don't see the new entrants, you don't see the, you don't see the innovation. It's really the new entrants that would drive in innovation. My point of view on the future of education, um, well, I can say what I think education should be more like, which is an interactive education should be more like, uh, like an interactive game, um, and much less like what it is today, which is 
sort of a rather boring vaudeville act. Um, you know, sort of one person kind of droning on in, in front of a bunch of others with, with no special effects. And, uh, and, and you know, the, it, it, it's sort of like if you think of the days of, of vaudeville, before there were movies or video games or anything, if you wanted to see a play, you'd, any given town would have a troop of actors. But they usually would be, they wouldn't be that good. Uh, and, uh, and now with movies, you take the, the best actors in the world, the best script writers, the best directors, uh, special effects, you do multiple takes, and you make it really compelling. Um, and that's why you want to sit down and watch a movie. Um, that's how teaching should be. Um, and then what, 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 what teachers, it's still a role for teachers, but it should be to help people where, where they get stuck, as opposed to sort of, you know, just lecture at them from the front of a the classroom. That's helpful.